Church, Church of God in Christ uh, about security. Um, as she was talking about the individual, the situation at, at Lakewood, one of the most dangerous persons that I consider in anything is a woman. And I'm not saying this since we're here because we don't think women will have a capacity in anything to come in and do that. She came in with a long dress, long coat on, and a, and, and, and a long gun underneath and she started shooting. Most folks see the woman over here, she, she's fine. And they think that right there is something they think you, you got to be a cognizant of at all times. She's somebody come in with a long overcoat on. If I walked in here with my, with my mat coat on and, and my hat and everything on, what would you thought? It's fishy. It's fishy. It's fishy. All right. Just a little bit about myself. I've been in the Church of God in Christ since 1985. I got saved and sanctified the Holy Ghost field for that class in Kitsington, Germany, under a pastor, Anderson Gray. Uh, I was there with the Bishop Moody when he was there as, as the prelate over there, and, and, and I built the Church of God in Christ with that. I built the Church of God in Christ in, uh, in Germany and, and in Korea, uh, in, in Canada as well. So I've been around the church for quite a long time. And I think I, I'm married. My wife is a supervisor, Riddick, who just uh, stepped down as a supervisor of uh, Texas Western Jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. I have three children. I'm all of them adults. All of them got the education. All of them doing fine. I got five grandkids and stuff. Uh, I'm a retired military. I, I did 25 years active duty. Uh, I got out and went back and, and got my degree because the army's going to pay for it. I said, when I go to school, take the time out and do it. So I got my degree in criminal justice. I started out with business management, but some things didn't think that happened. I'm like, well, I don't even know the law. Mm -hmm. I need to have an understanding of the law. So I went into criminal justice and got an understanding of the laws of the land and the laws of Texas and the laws of the land work that. I uh, graduated with arms, and then since then I've been with a uh, private security company out of Austin, Texas, and so and then we do uh, static security and we do plain clothes security as well. All the individuals that we do are at level four, and level four and individuals and they are well trained individuals and stuff. They, they know how to conduct themselves and stuff. Uh, they, they pretty got their heads on the shoulders, so they, they don't you don't blow up real quickly and stuff with that. So uh, so where are we at? So does the church need security? Well, we got the Holy Ghost, all right? We got God on our side, all right? Does the church need security? If you look at Jeremiah, I mean, Nehemiah, when he, when he was about ready to build a wall, and so people came up against him, and so and they, they, they were, they were, they, and they were determined not to let that go forth. And so while the men were working, okay, they had a sword in one hand mm -hmm. and, they, and, and a tool in the other hand. That's right. That's and they said, so yes, yes, we need security. And I have that going forth with all the things we got here, uh, uh, it's very important, amen. Yeah, I, I believe it. I'm saying the Holy Ghost feels fine, baptized, and anything. But if you like the devil in, anything, he, he'll go around it. And so, 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 one of the things that uh, uh, Pastor Rebecca asked me to talk about was situation awareness. Situation awareness is being aware of your surroundings, knowing on what's going on around you, who is around you, what is around you, and why these things here around you. And it says, uh, situation awareness is the fundamental skill set for church security team members. Devote special attention to training and situational awareness skills, ensuring that the teams and members identify potential threats. How do you identify potential threats? If you're not been trained to identify potential threat, you may overstep yourself mm -hmm. and stuff and all here and then get yourself into situations and stuff that'll bring harm upon the church. Okay, so. Suspicious behavior, person acting suspicious. This person may have a, a mental problem, and, and all of that. And so, so just being able to understand that, so you have to train your team to learn to recognize these things and the unusual activity. And so, so you're out in the parking lot and you see something out there that's not, not look quite right. And so, and then you don't need to call everybody, every deacon, and every elder in the church. All right, I'm gonna get into that. And then things. So, so we need to make sure that. We understand that, so we can establish a basic uh, thing. Uh, basic patrolling procedures. Uh, when I go out on patrol, I, I'm usually uh, now in the static area. I have a what we call an atomic flashlight, and then I take it and I click it, and I can see everything for, for at least hundred feet. And I so I, I go. I don't when I go in to go in the dark places. I don't go just. I I, I do a little check, back out. If it's good, then I'm going to proceed on. And so if, that, if I'm out there on patrol and I got a partner with I'm letting them know where I'm at mm -hmm. at all times. Where I'm at at all times. So, 
So make sure you have patrols, uh, even around your church. Make sure there's a, a uh, when you have service, have somebody walk around the service. Yeah. And they, you know, every, every hour or so, they take over 30 minutes or so. So that they know that people, if people don't see people moving and stuff like that, that's when they're going to break into people's cars. All right? That's when they, they, they can take the opportunity to get something, all right, that they, they, they want to see in the car. And you tell your church folks, come in, make sure that if they got something in, the, in their car of importance, of, of value, take it, put it in the trunk, okay, or cover it so that people walking by won't see it. And so, and so it's make sure you develop a good, but and, and even inside, if individuals uh, come into church and you're just walking around, you're like, why, why are you over in this particular area here? And then why, why are you here? Is it not supposed to be there? Kindly escort them on out. And uh, I know mean, we had escorted people out, out of the, uh, <laughs> some of our events before and stuff, and then they, I don't engage, in, uh, physically engage. And so and then they, we never talk, never to touch person in church. Ne never. And they think you 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 uh, talk to that individual with understanding that we want to get your attention to get you out of the situation that you're in right now. And then you know there is a potential in anything that may cause for us in that thing. The right of self-defense is never denied. And if the if individual side in that thing is going to beat on you like Joe Fraser and stuff, then you got a right to defend yourself. Yeah, okay. When you use activities within the church premises, so all around. I walk around a little bit here. And I notice out here when you have this light up, you got the power switch, okay, open to the public. They can flick that on and off. Y'all need to get a cover for that. Put a lock on it and make sure the people who have the key know where it's at. So they can come by, flick the light up, especially if you got ladies here at night and stuff. Make sure those lights and everything are going and get that thing covered up there, okay? Basic patrol. Okay, security versus uh, uh, safety ministry. Security, well, Security main thing is, is to keep you all safe. Safety uh, is make sure they think that everything inside the confines of the church is safe. Your fire extinguishers are updated. Okay, your your your, your exit uh, uh, marked properly. They illuminated or they got the paper one. But that what do people know how to do to get out of a church in case there's a situation there? How do you evacuate that? And you all have to develop that. You have to bring everybody together and say, hey, in case this is happening, this is what we want you to do here. And give you an assembly point out in the parking lot, all right? And then they want to go to. But everybody can't go out one door at the same time. Mm -hmm. And stuff like that. So that right there will, will get you, will kind of get things uh, seemingly uh, set up for, for failure. And stuff like that. Uh, also, in your safety team, uh, if you have a, uh, a first aid team or a, a doctor team or, uh, or nurses here, Ensure that they have a trauma bag. What I mean by a trauma bag, in case someone actually does get in here and start anything throwing around rounds in here, all right, they will know how to treat those individuals. Because if, if you hit an artery and then they person bleed out, and you don't know, the be person bleed out in five or six minutes. And so, so you do those things right there. So you can get you a, 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 a trauma bag with that and make sure the folks are trained on it. Make sure they are first aid certified. Make sure they are first aid certified with that. And so I just so, so how do you train for a situation of awareness? One thing is uh, uh, I, I use that thing for training with situation awareness is the word uh, 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 slam. Stop, look, access, and a man and manage. What do you mean stop? Okay, if you stop and see, see something's not going quite right, now that your presence there right then and there, okay, and let the person know that I I I, I got my eyes on you. And I'm, and I'm watching you. And I'm, and I'm checking out what you're doing. I'm going to look and see what's going on. I'm going to assess what's going on here. Okay? Then, then I'm going to match. Let me get access. If you see something going on, don't look quite right. Don't jump in there right away. Because it may be just a, a simple thing, all right, going on. And you don't know what the situation is. Now you get in a situation that has, has gone from here all the way to there. And, that thing, and then now and then thing is it, it's, it's out of control. And so police have been called and stuff. And thing, because you, you missed screw what was going on. Then you manage the situation. You manage the Ma'am, sir, how can I help you? And then can I assist you with what directions I need to give you and then get you your location. Manage it. Never come up with a person and anything aggressively. Because if you come up aggressively and stuff, you're gonna get aggression. You are gonna get aggression back. They're they like, oh you come up, hey, I ain't no pump. <laughs> and uh, so so you, you want to do those things there. Now there's a book that I got. Uh, 
that, that you can get. It's about the 15 fundamentals of the law for de-escalation. And, 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 and read that, okay? We learn how to de-escalate a situation, all right? Because you never want to get in a situation where it was something small and it, it blooms out of proportion. All because you approach that individual in the wrong manner. And they're going to react. And they, 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 their nature is going to rise up. And so the next thing, you got, you got arms and legs and fists and stuff and everything going on here. And then, then you got a situation. If you want to, if some, I highlight some of the things in here. I know I with that. So learn how to de-escalate things here. I know we're in church. And so and then learn how to, remember, we have to be on our best behavior. Yes. We must know how to treat people right. Because if you address somebody improperly, and stuff, they, that dagger is going to roll up. Mm -hmm. I don't care if they've been saved 45,000 years, and then you, you come up and you step on this bucket of fruit shoe, mm -hmm. and it goes for $500 shoes, you're like, well, and, and we, we ain't going there. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so we make sure those things. So, so stop, look, assess, and manage. Then there's something called the, the, the Cooper uh, system. The Cooper system is a, is a system of giving different codes red, green, black, and blue to a situation that the people that are on your security team would know what it is. And I say, if you if you got red, I suggest you get you some radios and get you one of your piece. If I if I call out a, a cold red to him and he knows what a cold red is, mm -hmm. all right, he's gonna be at and so I'm not gonna get out in the pulpit and say, well, Bishop, excuse me, we got a cold red, because you will have mass confusion. You will have mass confusion in it. You got people getting stomped over. You got all the old, the, the, the senior uh, uh, women in the church and stuff. You got all the kids and stuff right here. So when you have a situation, keep it as low key as possible because you don't want to start a stampede. And I think other people get hurt for that. So develop a Cooper system. A Cooper system, and, and who have been in a hard school before? They, they call it cold blue, cold yeah, red. Yeah, yeah. All right, those, those things. People within that facility know what they do. And if you call it a cold blue, if you're not on a cold blue team, you don't react to it. If you're on a, if you, if you're on a cold red, you react to it. So once you establish that by establishing a, a security SOP and train your team appropriately, all right, then they know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. There's something called muscle memory. And they think, you know, if you go out and work out and stuff and everything, and you go for a little bit and everything, it, it, it muscle goes, hey, I'm there. I'm not going in the fire and stuff like that. So train those individuals with that uh, the training. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> once you establish that that uh, that system, and thing, one thing you want to establish is system to it is reduce the efforts of disrupt of, of disrupt disruption and stuff. Key individuals need to be in place. Okay. Key individuals maintain a presence. I mean, if, if we ask something or something goes on, everybody does not need to go out of the service. Because everybody started getting up, bishop started getting up, all the elders started getting out, running out here, people are like, oh, what's going on? <laughs> that, that, that Holy Ghost thing done, 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 done left them, and they looked around like, what's going on? Bishop gone, and all the elders gone, and we here all by ourselves. And they tell you, you make sure that you, you establish your, your security process and stuff, that you let key people in there and thing know what you do, and everybody does not have to respond to the situation. Everybody does not have to respond because if everybody responding, you're going to cause mass panic. And then you may manage the, the situation effective. Management is one of the main things you got to do. You got to learn how to manage. It's like you know how to manage a church, how, how you do things for you. You got to know how to manage it. If you don't manage it and stuff, you get yourself in a situation. Now let's talk about suspicious reports and suspicious, suspicious people. Okay? Suspicious reports and things are, are reported to law enforcement, and there's some, some things you need to do, and I think when you see a suspicious person, I walked in here, okay, with uh, uh, a 1973 Afro and that thing, in tennis shoes, shorts, and a tank top, you say something wrong with that brother, yeah. and then they hit something, something I, I, got, I got to alert somebody, and then we got somebody that, that you know, you know, they got up on the wrong side of the bed, they ate the wrong type of marbles. And stuff, and everything here. So, so, that. so what, so what do you do when you see a suspicious person? I'm going to give everybody a hand out this year. Say, when you do that, write, write down who, who it was, and what you saw. When you saw it. What occurred. What did you see? 
Don't try to uh, elaborate. What did you see? Because if you if you have to go to court, all right, and if they to testify, what they testify, about, what did you see? Because you know those defense lawyers and the thing, they will trick you up. They say, what is, what is your vision? Do you have 2020 vision? How can you see that far? <laughs> what did you see? And don't put anything else into it. All right, what what did you see? What, what occurred? What is suspicious about it? The fisherman was doing stuff, and they, he was looking in the windows, and they, he was looking uh, under cars and stuff, things of this nature. Some of the things to remember race, gender, clothing. Clothing is very, very important. What that individual was wearing, okay? The direction in which it, you know, uh, where's north from here? Get you right. This is Everywhere I go, I carry a, a call it a lunatic compass. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. But on my on my phone, okay, I, I, I got a compass on my phone. So north is that direction right there. And then so make sure you, you get your direction. So you know, say, well, well he, he went he went down the yard, but there's a tree and, and a bomb. No, that's not please might not understand that. All right, so what direction? And then you go, okay, all right. That, that's not going to go. They can, they can look at you like, uh, but really, God has said, I said, that was Wes. Okay. What about the individual? Was he on foot? Was he the male or female? What were they wearing? If there was a, in, a, in a vehicle, what type of vehicle was it? Okay. Was it blue? Was it a Malibu? Was it a Cadillac? Was it an El Dorado? Was it an F-150, F-3, a 250, or a, C uh, a Chevy Silverado, whatever it was? To your best ability, try to remember what that car was, or truck, the color, model, and any specific uh, uh, markings. I know there's a guy in, 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 in who I live at that has these big old long spokes like them on, on the side of his car, on his wheels and stuff. And I'm like, man, that's, that's not right. I mean. You're going down the street and then you, you can run into somebody's car. That's a very distinguishing thing here. Police officer, yeah. He's got a green El Dorado, low rally, he's got these big spots on the side. Please know I remember who it is. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, so, so that. Height and weight, all right, to, to your best ability. Was he tall? Was he short? Were they round? Were they, were they medium? Were they over? All right. Just estimate what, what it is with that. And anything that you may give to law enforcement, all right, to help them to corral this individual and keep them away from the church. If they come over here too much, they, you can, they, can, they can write them a ticket for criminal trespass. And if they write a ticket for criminal trespass, they come back on your property. Then they can spend some time in, in the boat. They spend some time down there with, with Rudolph and all the other reindeers. And stuff. <laughs> so, 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 so with that, so, all right. So, so, so where are we at? Uh, going back to the, the need for security. Uh, there, there have been situations and stuff when uh, individuals, the, the church is high, and all of a sudden this individual you don't know, and he gets up and then he starts walking towards Bishop Gatlin. Amen. All right, and then they here. He may he may disagree with something Bishop told him to do, or whatever they think here, or, or, or accuse Bishop or whatever. He starts walking with Bishop Gatlin. He should not get within ten feet of Bishop Gatlin. You should not. Somebody should be there. So how can I help you? Can we leave you alone? Remember when the guy talked about it? They, 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 they dance in the Holy Ghost and dance. The guy went off the, off the, off the uh, pulpit with him, Bishop, Bishop Patterson. The guy, Bishop Patterson, they went to the guy and they told him to leave and everything. And he said, the next song we get up and everything, we're going to dance on out of here and go on from there. So, so they, they danced on out of there and got up, got us caught away. So, so your main principle in this church is your, your pastor, your bishop, Church lady, church mother, and any other one that we should designate to be a principal. He's your main principal. He's the main one you want to get out of that. So make sure those things are squared. Now on my on my little sheet here, I got uh, some things that uh, we can talk about as well. Now let me let me stop you there. Mm -hmm. Now we know that Bishop would be the principal. Mm -hmm. Would his wife be a principal? That's his wife. That's his wife. That's his wife. Okay. So you're going to move her as quickly as possible because first thing he's going to look around for is, Bishop said, What? 
Where's my wife? Okay. Where, where's my wife? Well, they done remain to you when you get out there. And then just, you, as you delineate as who is trustful and wants to get out the church as quickly as possible for safety, that's on him. Okay. Okay, with that. And I'm not going to try to stop and stack it on there, but I'd rather admit he's the principal. So in our group, mm -hmm. uh, we know that Bishop would be the principal. So that, um, we have ladies in our group. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've, I've always tried to sit them over in that area mm -hmm. by mother mm -hmm. uh, or Sister Gala. Do she mind me calling her mother? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. By mother. And and I think in my mind, and I haven't verbalized it, mm -hmm. but in my mind, if anything would happen, I know that the brothers, even mm -hmm. the one that's occupying the pulpit, mm -hmm. would take care of Bishop. Mm -hmm. But I really didn't verbalize mm -hmm. to the ladies or anybody sitting over there with, with mm -hmm. mother and that uh, uh, Bishop's wife. Mother, Mother Roach, church. Well, church. she's a jurisdiction yeah. supervisor. Yeah. That would be our principal. That would be your principal. That would be your principal. And one of the things, anything to go along with that, as you as you train up and all here, you got to establish the, the different teams. Everybody can't be on, on, on the A team. Right. Everybody can't be have that big designated A on their chest and stuff. Like my team in the national. Right? <laughs> <laughs> everybody. Everybody, not, I want to be on the bishop. The, 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 the right. Bishop Miller tell you if you see the uh, the, the, the design of bishop detail and then if he asks you to make way for it, make way and carry on. Don't jump in there and then because you you might get you 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 gonna you gonna get lit up. And all that thing. So, <laughs> so just go ahead and go with that. Uh, so let's talk about some things you know here. That, uh, bishop, I hope you don't mind. This right here, since the governor of Texas has alluded that everyone in the state of Texas can get a gun. Everybody can buy a gun and not be trained. Do you know how to use this? If I ask you to clear it, what will you do? I want to be touched. You want to be touched? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then take it. Who's phone? Oh, okay. <laughs> Understand this right here. This thing here has the potential to, to protect. And then they also have to get you some trouble. All right? Okay. Now, one of the things that uh, we were taught, uh, I think it was uh, Major, uh, what's the guy that's a uh, former military guy. He said, if you're not willing to catch one of these right here and stuff and that thing, uh, I mean, like you said, if you're not willing to catch one of these right here, uh, Wisconsin, the Wisconsin, anything, all right, you're in the wrong location. But if you've been part of a security team, that is your job, anything, to protect your leaders, to protect your leaders and stuff. Uh, one thing about it, uh, is this, I, I got my own insurance. Wade. Wade, 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 Wade. Chief, Chief, uh, yeah. And I'm here. Uh, I, I have my, uh, my uh, uh, armed security at church. I have my own own uh, insurance. If I can find my card here, where do I put it? <clears throat> Got so much card, so much plastic went a little through it. I have this right here. If I was to unholster my weapon and discharge it, my first thing to do is to call the memo on the back of this car before I even call the police. I'll clear my weapon, sit down, call the police. So if you don't have this right here, okay, you don't have your own insurance, I have a lawyer and I have two expert witnesses that would testify for me in court. If you don't have that, that, uh, uh, insurance, you, you're going to be in trouble. What I'm talking about insurance is part of the church, okay? The church can have, if you can have armed security on your on your premises, make sure it is covered in your insurance. They got insurance as well. Because if, if somebody get hurt on your property, you can just turn on and shoot somebody with a weapon, they coming out the church. They're coming out, then they, then, then we can talk about how they're going to do that, okay? All right? Yes, sir. How does that, uh, if 
work in conjunction with the church's insurance. So in this case, mm -hmm. uh, uh, or in our jurisdiction's case period, mm -hmm. yes, sir. if we go to the civic center, mm -hmm. we still have pretty much the same sit-up mm -hmm. at, at, at the civic center. Does that make the civic center liable? Or the church liable? It will make that, 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 make that the civic center liable because you are in their building. You are, you are in their building. Okay. With that, so, but I can say with it, check with your, your insurance company and check with them and see about who, who has liability concerning any event that happens within the body. So if that firearm is discharged here, mm -hmm. then all of that needs to take place uh, you call that number and just right. This, this is just for me. This is just for me. This, this, okay. this, 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 this is just for me. This is just so for me. anyone that's carrying the anyone firearm. Anyone that's carrying. Now, now, what I'm saying to you now, if you're going to carry a firearm in the state of Texas, I know the, the, the governor said you don't have to have it in a training. If you go to court, you discharge your, your weapon and you shoot somebody, the first thing that the defense lawyer says, who trained you? Who trained you? What's the certificate? Where, where's the certificate of certification? Why well, you went and got a gun? Oh. You didn't spend some time in anything with Jeffro. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't spend some time with Jeffro. Because yeah. right, 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 right now you, you're liable because now you got a piece of uh, equipment and stuff that you don't know how to operate. You don't know what the, the, the capacity of it is. And so, so I, if you're gonna if you're gonna carry in, in, in the state of Texas and stuff right here, or any state, get you a, a, a company that will secure you. This is Texas law shit. Mm -hmm. And I, I've been with them since whoa, 20, 2012, when I first started carrying my weapon with this way. So do it. So uh, uh, I always tell pastors and stuff, check your insurance company that you got your insurance company with and see if they have a clause in there that will protect people that in your church that are armed in case something go on. See what they have and then they to cover you over that. I, I, I had a, I had church mutual uh, and, and anything when I was in El Paso and stuff and I had this uh, it wasn't a, a, a firing situation. It was a situation that uh, where my property line was in the sidewalk there was a set of steps up there and this uh, individual come up and uh, and tripped and fell. And so not on my property, but it, but it led to my property. And so and they, they come up, well, well, he hurt himself out there and stuff and everything. And I'm like, oh. I said, well, is he on my property? No. And then well, he's coming to your service. I'm, I'm like, well, hey, he, he's not on my property. Okay, I'm, I'm not doing I, I call my I call my company, insurance company, uh, we have been good to go. And then I, I had a hundred, I had a, a million dollar insurance policy. Mm -hmm. And I said, associate and if anybody getting injured. And it's in on one property. Somebody slipped and fall in the church. Somebody mopped the floor too much, put too much water down there, they slip and fall. And so they think, if they try to sue you, you, you got it in the hand. You know that. Okay. Uh, training. Training is very, very important. That's why I said once you, you get out of here and I give you, I'm gonna give uh, uh passing uh the grievance and more training, some more information. To train your individuals is the most important thing to do. So if you train them, to react, not trying to figure out what's going on. If something happens, all right, you want to train them so when something does happen, they move automatically. They move automatically. Uh, uh, when we, uh, uh, if you're in a live fire situation, and so you tell the folks and everything, uh, in the military, they, they train people right because if you're in a live fire range and everything, people move before they're supposed to move, somebody can get shot. That's right. So you train your people, you train them, and I'm gonna give you the website to uh, to go in and uh, get your get your get your team certified. All right, certified in safety and certified in anything in uh, uh, in uh, 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 action shooter and the whole nine yards. You get everybody trained. Now you got a certificate. All right, and you say I can take this to my insurance company. Okay, all right. Now, I, all these individuals are trained and stuff right here. How can this affect me and anything as far as my insurance and stuff going on with that? 
So it, it, it's very important. I know we're in a we're we in a day and time now uh, that everybody is money hungry. Everybody needs to, is, is trying to get a quick buck and stuff. If you can protect yourself at all times, one of the first rules of teaching boxing: protect yourself at all times, because you never know when something's going to happen. So make sure that insurance is right. Once you get that training, they, you can go online and you can do it as a seminar. All right, it, it's, it's in there. Okay, on the back sheet. Okay, you can go online and get that training, get that certificate. All right, and then you can train your team associated with your your community right there. So these are people that are, that are with you. You know them. You train them, and they are squared away with that. So so go ahead and get that get that taken care of. I have a question. This is for me this point. So how do we as pastors and, and in, in our church get people to actually be trained in these live fire situations? Do you? I mean, it's kind of hard to just, all right, saints, we're going to uh, train and everybody hit the deck. Now, we as black folks, if y'all was, <laughs> was, was raised in a certain part of town, you know when gunshot going, what we do. We hit the deck, mm -hmm. but everybody's not in that situation. Okay, uh, and so can you can you actually have a? You can have a a, a training scenario. Okay. All right, and uh, and for your particular church, and you say to the folks, this is a training scenario. This is what you need to do in case something happens, because everybody in the congregation know what is going on and know how to act. We act. Then it would be much easier for you. So when people are like, well, I don't need that. I got the Holy Ghost. And I, well, I, I, I'm, I got the Holy Ghost too. And they think, uh, but I understand that the people start throwing lead and they think, in your service and they think, that thing does not have. No, it, 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 it ain't got no eyes. And they think, it ain't worried about whether you got saved and anything, you got five baptized or not. And it, it, it's going to hit you. And if it, it, it hit you wrong and anything, it's going to take you out. And you're going to be meeting Jesus. What would you advise? <laughs> If, if members of the congregation were caring about us, I would advise this as, as pastors: uh, make sure that they got a license. Make sure that they got a license. Make sure that they have some type of insurance for carrying that weapon. Then they say, I, I, "I went and I brought a gun." Okay. Make sure you got a license. I mean, insurance and anything to cover you for that. Because if you shoot somebody out there. And then, then you don't. The police will, 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 will first of all charge you with murder. Okay. Will, will charge you with murder until they get this stuff done. You need somebody to speak for you and stuff. And I hear that. So, uh, so I, if, if 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 that be the case, then I like, I don't mean to. Yes, 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 sir. But with these people sitting in the congregation, and you know they pack it. <laughs> Um, look like look like the whole church is in danger. So do we not tell them to don't bring their weapons to church, Bishop? If you've been a pastor of this church, and then you can you can put out there are certain individuals that I know here in this church that should come in here with their weapon. If you're not on that list. You don't want your weapon coming in here. You something called a 30 out six, 30 out seven. Yeah. 30 out six and anything here, you can't bring a, a, a weapon in at all. 30 out seven, you can come in, but it's gotta be concealed. But if you designate certain individuals within your congregation that hey, these individuals are, are, are my armed individuals and stuff like that, and they're covered under insurance and everything is covered with that, then it's fine. Anybody coming up there, they may you may say something about them and everything, and they might think you're talking about them. They get up and Going LA style on you and stuff like that. And I, I had a uh, had a lady in my church uh, in El Paso. Uh, she came in one day. It was kind of I think it was having problems coming across the border. She said, Pastor, and if uh, if anything happened, I, I, I'm I'm back. And, and then she had a big old three fifty seven. And so <laughs> and I like uh, we, we didn't have to talk mm -hmm. and, and stuff and all here with that. So uh, uh, with that that training is very important. It's like you train for your license to be a minister. You train for your license to be an elder. Train with the training is foremost. I can't. Uh, I, I, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna give everything that Pastor McGree here, but I'm not gonna come out here and train because my method of training. I'm a, I'm an old old drill sergeant, 
And so in my, my method of training, they may be different from his. And I'll hear that. But I want to make sure that you understand that this, this is significant within the church body of Christ right now. Mm -hmm. This stuff is happening. And we never had an incident at, at our national services or anything else. But this crazy guy running, running for president, and anything, if you, if you look at the news and you see what's going on around here and stuff, if, if you, I'm going to give that one. Well, let me, and let me answer this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need that uh, When I went to, uh, I have, I'm licensed to carry. Yes, sir. But at the end of our session, the guy said to everyone in the place, because you have to, you have to, Mm -hmm. You have to qualify yes, sir, for yes, the range mm -hmm. and shoot and be sure mm -hmm. that you can shoot and mm -hmm. that you can have a weapon just mm -hmm. to discharge and do everything that you need to do. But he told us at the end of the session, he said, if you shoot somebody, you're going to jail. If you shoot somebody, you're going to jail. I know we're giving y'all license, but if you shoot somebody, you're going to jail. If you shoot them in the head, you're going to get charged with murder mm -hmm. in the state. And everybody get this. If you shoot someone, the first thing the police are gonna do is come, and like you said, you're gonna call your lawyer, your people, mm -hmm. because when the police come out, you know the Miranda law. You know, you know what they tell you. Everything that you say, what can and, and will, will be held against you. So you, you need to, you need to not talk to the police. Mm -hmm. You're going to you go to jail. Mm -hmm. That's what they told us. Yeah, yes, you're going to jail. You're going to get bailed out by your family or whoever, and then you got to go to court. Mm -hmm. You got to clear yourself, but yeah. if you shoot someone, mm -hmm. and so with that understanding, when mm -hmm. I got my license, mm -hmm. that made me more aware mm -hmm. of, see, you, we see these youngsters around here mm -hmm. flashing their guns and everything, mm -hmm. and folks get mad at on this road and road rage and showing you a gun. Mm -hmm. I said to myself, that person don't have license to carry that because mm -hmm. I know the responsibility. Yes, sir. And if you show your weapon, mm -hmm. You're going to go to jail, too. You can't show your weapon. You, show your weapon. you know, oh, yeah, I'm not getting there. No, no, I, you know, so it's a lot involved. And I agree with you. If you're going to have a weapon in the church, you should have a license and you should have insurance. And, 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 insurance, and you should be trained on it. Amen. All right. You need to be trained on it. Young lady said, I want to touch it. And so I I, uh, I took my wife out to the ring and stuff. And they had to teach her how to shoot. That's right. And they think, uh, baby, they, if things go wrong, they think, and then you got to learn how to shoot as well. And so, man, then she went out there and everything and shot, shot, shot. So, man, and so, so, so I'm going to give that love to you. <laughs> Don't show this to Dr. Rick. All right, okay, all right. All right. Uh, get that. Get in, make sure you check the insurance. Make sure that insurance is, is scored later. Uh, but what, how, how it tells you, training. Training is monumental. Okay, that training is monumental. That right there, uh, uh, I cannot overemphasize the importance of training, training your teams at your local church what to do. Because you never know when that may happen. And if it, and, 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 and being in the military, if you're trained to a certain point, if something happens, you're going right here. You're going, you're going right here. You're going right there. You're going right there. And so it, it, it's built into our muscle memory. that we, we know how to react to those things there. The people know how to react to those things and, and be careful with everything there. Uh, like I said, uh, get a list, a list of members that are authorized to carry a weapon. Let them know, okay, if you carry a weapon in your initial phase when you're talking with somebody coming to church and stuff, yeah, you got the Holy Ghost, you got five like that, and they think, are you carrying a weapon? Make that part of your, your initial uh, assessment of the individual. Are you, are, you, do you, are you licensed to carry? Do you have a weapon? And so then you say, well, I, I would never ask that. And so now, now, now that ball starts to snowball down the road. And it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And so, but I thought I had, had the pastor's permission to do that. Keep yourself out of hot water. Okay. If you put signs on the windows. If you, if you put signs up now, you got to have a 30 out 6 bishop or a 30 out 7. It's best to have both of them. The 30 out 6 and 30 out 7 gives permission. The 30 out 6 says no weapon at all. The 30 out 7 says you know, if you have a weapon, it's got to be concealed. And all here with that. So it, you can't come in there like like Dodge City, like that, like Matt Dillon, like Matt, Matt, Matt Dillon there. Yeah, boy, I got a lot of blue on here, but baby, no, you, you can't. It, it's got. When I go into a bank, I don't even take my weapon with me. I you can't. You can't. I, I can't. I, no, no, sir. Because um, most of them have a third out six, third out seven on there, right, right yeah. away. And anything, I don't want to get caught in a tricky situation. Mm -hmm. And so, and anything, somebody come up in there. And, 
and anything, or peace out, come out there, and anything. I, I've had many times I was driving through a place of South Esteem deal, and the guy stopped me, and anything. He ran my license, and the first thing he came back says, Mr. Riddick, do you have your weapon on you? Mm -hmm. And I said, no. I didn't have it on me. I was going back and forth. But when I used to carry my weapon, I keep it in this. I keep my ammunition in one place, and I keep my weapon in another. And so, it's not loaded. And it's not loaded. It's, it's not loaded. It's not loaded because strange things can happen. And then they, the, the, the police are already scared, already. It's dark out. You don't know who you stop. And our, our men, the hearts already going. And they're praying for the Holy Ghost, and they're, they're praying for the Spirit. And then they, you don't want, if you do that, and then when you stop, and then they put your hands on the wheel. And then they follow the commands. Even if you don't like it, follow their commands. Follow their commands. Then y'all can sort it out in court. Now, just like your, your, when you took your firearm out mm -hmm. just now, it was loaded. It was loaded. Was that legal? For me, uh, yes. Well, when I uh, move into places and stuff, and I go outside of my vehicle, I take my weapon with me. I take my weapon with me, and I, I always keep, I know on security, you always keep one in the chamber. Yes, sir. You keep one in the chamber, uh, whatever you go, that I just came, this is, this is my work weapon, so I just came straight on through here and stuff like that. Always in the security side, they always keep one in the chamber. Uh, most of the police officers and everything keep one in the chamber. Can you explain right. that to those who don't understand what that means? Okay, one in the chamber. That means that my weapon is 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 primed to fire. And that means I got one in the chamber. I have a round that is loaded and anything in the in the in the uh, in the uh, in the firing process and everything here. All I have to do is come from safety to trigger trigger. And anything is after that, anything is history. So when is that illegal? That would have to be probably argued in the court of law. No, uh, with that. Like I said, I came, this is, this is my work thing. I came, put my stuff in here and come on down here and stuff. That's why I, I took it out, showed it, unloaded it and stuff, and we, we're good to go. So I don't have to worry about it anymore. I'm, I, I've taught weapons, whoa, since. Since 1980, uh, uh, 9mm pistol, 45, 45 cal uh, pistol, uh, M16, uh, 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 light machine gun, heavy machine gun, uh, all those sort of things. I, I, I taught that and all of that. So just, so to, just don't. I just put this right here. So I just let you know if you're coming in, and then you have a mission and anything for your pastor to do it. Make sure that you you are uh, you, you keep that weapon in your car and anything. Well, you want to do it as loaded or whatever, that's, that's up to you. But for me, I think that's what I do. And, and Bishop, I think one of the reasons that those who carry weapons and license carry, the reason I keep one in chain because I don't have to cock my cock my uh, weapon. Uh, they told me the other day you can't call it a weapon anymore. That's a new thing. You call it a firearm. You know. But anyway, uh, I don't want to have to cock it. I want to be able to respond immediately, um, especially if I'm in danger. Uh, I'm very cautious about if I see something going on over there, try to intervene because uh, this white guy, and I think y'all saw it on the news, this white guy was with his family, and this brother, this black guy was fighting with his girlfriend, and he was shooting her, shooting her. He shot her, he, he shot her toe, he was just shooting us around. Well, the white guy got his car trying to intervene, mm -hmm. but the white guy got killed because the black guy he had been shooting, so we already had that muscle memory. He had already been shooting. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure the white guy got out, and it's a lot of anxiety once you decide to take that weapon out and start trying to intervene. Your mind going, uh, uh, adrenaline going, and the white guy got killed trying to be trying to do the right thing because the black guy was already I shot a toe off. I ain't worried about shooting somebody else. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason I keep and I keep mine in my vehicle. Mm -hmm. But I do keep one in chain because, you know, you never know what might happen. Yeah, yeah. Remember when I said, what was, it, what, was it, what was what was the, the key acronym, acronym, uh, the acronym I used? Slam. Slam. Stop, Slam. look, Slam. assess, Slam. and manage. manage. That's right. Stop. You don't want to go. You don't want to go over into something that you right. that you that's that right. you are not involved in. 
and stuff. And, 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 and you don't, don't want to, you, you might try to, uh, uh, <laughs> Nothing wrong with running. Nothing wrong with running. Like I said, think before you react. That's right. Think before you react. You may try to be a good Samaritan and stuff and everything, but you want to think about what's going on. You don't know what happened. If you, especially if it's if, if, a domestic dispute and stuff and everything. Husband fighting wife and stuff. You go there and try to grab that, grab that, grab that husband. What's she going to do? She's going to get you. She's going to get you. She's she, she, she going to get you. She's she, she, she going to get you. <laughs> She's she, she gonna get you. Okay. Uh, Bishop, if, if you hire a, a, a pastor, if you hire a security company to secure the grounds, ensure that they are insured and they are bonded. That means they're insured and they're bonded. They, they, that they have the, the, the paperwork and everything to run a security company. You have a lot of startup security companies. And so they just grab anybody off the street and say, well, come here, you, you, you're alive. You're breathing. Come on. I'm, I'm going to give you a weapon and stuff and everything. And, and you, you go over here and do this right here. Had never been trained and nothing whatsoever. They're probably the first one running out of the parking lot. And all of that. So make sure to check, check them in. They're insured and bonded. It's like if you hire a carpenter or a bricklayer or anybody who's going to work on your house, make sure they are insured and bonded. Because in the middle of the work, they disappear. You, you, you're out there. You, you, you stuck in that thing uh, <laughs> in the parenthood square away. And everything is, I put in there on the bottom of that, uh, uh, what does the church bylaw say about this right here? Uh, this, the church bylaws are very important. Yes, sir. And stuff like that. So in the church bylaws, uh, uh, whatever you want to put in there, well, we, we have armed security and, and, and on, on our grounds and, and, uh, and paid for with that. And stuff like that. So everything, because if something happened on your grounds and stuff, and and and, and, and these defense lawyers, these guys are smart. I'm telling you, they, 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 they're just as smart. And if they can find a technicality or anything that is not clarified and careful and, 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 and covered in there, they're coming after you. They, 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 they're going to come after you. They are going to come after you. So make sure you got everything uh, all decently set in order. So we're doing that, and so with that, so then those two little uh, uh, websites down the bottom there, okay, those are things that you can go in uh, and get your church certified in safety and certified in anything active shooter, response, and the whole nine yards. It'll cover everything that. So now you have your your, your, your members in your, in your body of your, of your church that are certified. By, by a licensed company to certify the folks, all right, to do the job as a security. Now, now you cover. Make sure your insurance is put away. Make sure they uh, uh, that that they have insurance. And so, uh, uh, one thing that uh, you, you can stop. I don't want this to be recorded. Here. <laughs>